Welcome to Hoi An, the City of Lanterns. Good morning from Hoi An. So we've been here for a few days and we are loving it. But today is the most special day. We're up early to meet our flytographer, Chu. That's right. So. Over the last few days, we had a traditional clothing made at one of the famous Hoi An tailors. They were able to do it for us in 24 hours. So we're going to meet you, stroll these beautiful historic streets, and we're going to have our photos taken. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because one of the most popular things to do in Hoi An is to go to a tailor, but we wanted to take it to the next level to remember this experience by having a photo shoot. I'm very excited about this. I've only done it once before. It's Alan's first time. I think it's going to be really interesting. photographer on this because I really wanted to show that you could get a tailored outfit but to take it to the next level is just so much more special and so when I met Chu and Van they knew that I wanted to shoot a video about this and Van took my phone to shoot kind of these behind the scenes footage and they were just so so nice really fantastic we wanted pictures together but also pictures separately that we could use and Hoi An the ancient city part is so beautiful but you do need a photographer who's been there who knows the ins and outs to take you to the best places and so even though we went to a lot of places we were able to do it very quickly because Chu has been doing this for so long I just I can't say enough about this and it just really inspired me that I think every country I feel like I have to do this at least once because I looked at some of the pictures just in the camera and they were beautiful like I just I feel like this made the trip. Now because we started so early, we didn't have a chance to eat breakfast. It's 10 a.m. So we're here at Ni Quang 92. Now if you remember my last video, I took a food tour with Min and he said one of his favorite spots was open only from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. But if I couldn't make it, Ni Quang 92 right here was also fantastic. He eats at both spots. This is a traditional dish, a rice noodle dish from this region, the Quang Nam region. And what's interesting about it is it's a thick rice noodle. Now, the traditional way to have it is it's a thick rice noodle with shrimp and pork. As well, they give you greens, lime, and then some fish sauce with chili in it, and then a cracker on top. So you get the soft rice noodle, the cracker, which is a little bit crunchy, and then all of this delicious pork and shrimp. If you don't eat pork or shrimp, they'll also do a shrimp only bowl for you. They will do a beef bowl for you. They will also make a fish bowl for you. Basically anything you want. This is primarily eaten at breakfast and lunch. Let me try the pork first because let me tell you, the pork in Hoi An for some reason is so much more delicious. Mmm. Oh yeah. The pork here is so good. It's just really tender, full of flavor. Mmm. And these noodles. This is delicious. Really, really soft noodles. Just full of flavor. I have to say, the food in Hoi An really really good there are a lot of upscale places to eat but i think where you get fantastic value is traditional food where locals eat this all of it is only thirty-five thousand. want all my tips including what didn't make it into videos check out my vietnam guide for what to see eat and do plus crucial tips for renting a motorbike in vietnam all right so let's talk about this i rarely eat my whole bowl of food. People always ask me, how can I eat so much in a day? What am I doing? And usually what happens is Alan and I split food and I give him the rest of mine if there's any left over. But this is so good. Now they told me that the noodles here are handmade every day fresh. 
And then in this, it's a tomato mix. So you've got that umami flavor also with the peanuts. And then the sweetness is not sugar. They add a little bit of pineapple to it. It's just enough. I couldn't even taste the pineapple, but it is a little bit sweet. Mm. And I had to get a spoon because it's so good. I got a small, but actually I would recommend getting a large here. It's that good. That lunch was so good and they were so nice. Alan asked for some pineapple. She was cutting up pineapple and he just asked for a piece and they said, no problem, it's cheap here. It's really good, just take it. We won't charge you for it. So such nice people. She also told me that actually the fish noodle is one of the most popular. They catch it and serve it fresh daily. It's a river fish. So she said, next time if I have time, I should come try the fish one. I thought, it would be really good, maybe tomorrow. It's so hot here, I am sweating. Alan changed out of his clothes, but I did not. So we're going to go back to the hotel. And I think because it's so hot, too hot to walk around town, I think we're gonna to go to the beach. We're staying in a little boutique hotel that's very close to Old Town, maybe six minutes away. Now I know people who come here longer or have been here several times, they actually stay farther out, they get really good deals, but it's low season. Look at this place. It's gorgeous and we have a great balcony view, but also because it's low season right now, we got a great deal on booking. I think it's 15 US dollars a night. And the staff here are really fantastic. Now, to be honest, a lot of people would tell you going to Hoi An end of June is a disaster. It's stinking hot. And you know what? It is 35 degrees in the afternoon, but you just have to plan your day well. So locals get up at 5 a.m. and they're in the town from 5 a.m. until like 10 or 11. And then in the thick of the heat, they're usually inside and then they come back out late afternoon. So that is what I would recommend. What I really like though, is that there are no crowds. So right now, during the day, you know there's some people out, but you don't have to worry about waiting in line for a restaurant or not being able to get a hotel. You've got lots of space, it's fantastic. There are also lots of air conditioned and fans on you. And as I said, like this balcony right here is so, so good, but, at night it does get really crowded and that's because so many tours come in from Da Nang so we have found night in the ancient city really really busy and I'll show you that later but everyone has told me that during high season it gets five times as busy so for that reason alone I would recommend visiting in low season over high season because in the low season it's elbow to elbow so I don't even know what it would be like in high season but I will show you that later tonight <music> one of the signature dishes of Hoi An. This is kom ga, or chicken rice. This is not the first time that we've had it. Because in Saigon, one of our favorite places to eat was a kom ga shop with people from this area. So we are familiar with it. What you have here is shredded chicken with Vietnamese cilantro, also known as coriander. You've got pickled papaya, onion. It's served with a little bit of lime. And then also what makes this so delicious is actually the rice is cooked in chicken broth and then they give you a little bit more chicken broth to put on it. And so what you should do is just pour some of this goodness on it. You can see in the bottom we've got some kidney and some other offal. And then you just take your two chopsticks and you mix it all together. Mm. What makes it so good is not only the rice, but also the quality of the chicken. Here in Hoi An, I've just found chicken, pork, high quality. I think that just speaks to the agriculture here, using free range, high quality animals, not factory farms. Now, there are a number of places in Hoi An that serve Kam Ga. In our last video on the food tour, Min actually told us of a place that is so popular now with tourists. It's really good, but locals don't go because they don't want to wait in line. But he shared this spot with us right out on the street, so you know that we love it. 
It opens at noon and I believe it closes at around 10 p.m. or till they run out. But this spot is very popular with locals. It's 2.30, we sat down, we were the first people and then they had a huge rush. We've seen in the last 15 minutes over 30 people stop by. Thankfully we got one of the few seats. But it's just so, so good. Let's try some of this rice. Mm. Mm. This is what I remember from Saigon, just asking them like, why is your rice so good? And the secret is the stock. The stock from the good chicken in the rice, you pour more on top. This is only 25,000 and a glass of trada, five. 30,000 for a huge portion of food and it's so delicious. One of the things that I forgot to mention was this pickled papaya. It is so delicious, unripe papaya pickled. It just adds this tartness, tanginess that is so good. We popped into Style Motorbike's office in Hoi An for an oil change and to check the motorbike to prepare for our ride north. I also switched up my broken helmet to this fancy neon yellow one. All right, so we decided to skip the beach because we're going to Da Nang and instead decided to do a basket boat tour. Now, I originally wasn't going to do this because it seems really touristy, but when we took our photo shoot today, our photographer Chu said, if you're gonna come to Hoi An, you really should do this. Even locals do it every once in a while. And so he gave us a place to go that's very close to town, only seven minutes away. And we are here. Now, basket boats I've only ever seen in Vietnam and that's because uh, during colonial times, also known as when France invaded Vietnam, uh, what they did was they put a tax on boats. And so to get around that tax, what the Vietnamese did was they created these baskets which could float. These baskets are really great for floating, not tipping over, really great if you're fishing close to shore or in a river. I've seen them in Mui Ne, also saw them in Phu Quoc. They're also great for tourists. So we paid 240000 which includes the boat, some kind of other stuff with it and an entrance fee which we did not get a receipt for but 240,000 for two people not bad should be around 40 minutes and we're just waiting for a driver heading into the second section here everyone was told to put on life jackets because those are regulations or they would have problems but not to do them up because of everyone's bellies <laughs> I think you gave a good tip. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, that was hilarious to end. We tipped her 150, which is almost the price, but it's not easy work at all. And so she was just so excited at the end, giving us high fives, saying very good. It was fantastic. Um, we're gonna go get some coffee. This was just super cheesy, but we knew going into it it would be, and it was just fun. It was just really fun. I recommend it. It's just before sunset, and we dropped off the car at the hotel because Old Town really starts to get crowded at night, and tonight it seems especially crowded, which means it's a pedestrian area, but even close to it, there's not a lot of parking. It just makes sense to walk a few blocks down here. The streets are also too busy right now because everyone's trying to get in their last minute Instagram photos. I really think Hoi An is a city where you need to bring your most beautiful dress because everyone else is dressed to the nines in beautiful colors and styles. It's just somewhere you want to take great photos, so I'm happy we did that this morning. We're at Finn Coffee. Now, this is a spot that my friend at Midnight Blue Element wrote about in her guide to coffee in Hoi An. Her favorite place closed, but she also loves this spot, and I have to say we do too. It's almost a hidden garden, and so in the middle of the day, when it's so hot, this is really refreshing. We've been here every single day. 
We've eaten their sourdough bread, their breakfast, their apple pie. I had the Finn coffee 100% robusta and it was powerful. It actually took me a while to come down. Now, the one thing I haven't tried yet is this peanut coffee. So it's a double shot of espresso, peanut butter, condensed milk. I think that might be it, but it's six o'clock and this is a double shot of espresso. So last night, I guess I'm gonna be up for a while. Mm. <laughs> this is really, really good. This is fantastic. I'm glad I didn't discover this my first day because I would be having it every day. But Vietnam is home to so many great coffees. Salt coffee, I think we're gonna try in Da Nang. Egg coffee, we'll have in Hanoi. Coconut coffee, we first tried in Saigon. And now, this peanut butter coffee. I'm going to make this recipe at home because it's delicious. All these little places here that have the lanterns will allow you to take a photo. For the light, it's 10,000. And uh, they also have a seat where you can take a photo. Okay, so we're heading down to the waterfront now, the riverfront. And one side is mostly river boats. You can take a river boat tour with multiple people on it. If you go farther down, you can take a gondola-like tour. Both are actually very reasonable. I think the gondolas, which are fantastic, like look beautiful at night are 150,000 per person. So very affordable and it's a 20 minute ride. And then there's just lots of other things along the way. We've already taken a boat ride today. So we've decided, actually we're not gonna do the gondola ride, but I will show you what it looks like if we can see it through the crowds. thousand dong on us right now because we need to go to the ATM and this gentleman told us he would give it to us for 200,000 versus the other gentleman who said 200,000 each so I don't know we're very lucky I need to put my mic in because I think this is gonna be loud unexpected romantic boat That was great. Uh, it was just 10 minutes out and back. You basically go by a, a bridge that's very colorful and then you put a lit candle, may you make a wish. I wasn't expecting that. So I think for 200, that was a really, that was a nice 20 minutes to spend. Um, as you come down here, you do see more gondola type things. I've noticed no one there is wearing life jackets. And I think on this side, you can negotiate the price. Whereas as we head further down to the crowds, there are set prices and I believe it's 150,000 per person and you must wear a life vest. Of course that's to protect tourists, but I don't know why for some reason, you know, 100 meters down the road, you don't have to wear one, but then you do here. Anyway, we're about to walk into the crowds. So let's go check it out. I can already see as we walk down, it's getting here, there's room. But as we go in there, if it's like the last couple nights, there's no room to do anything. It's just a big crowd, especially as we get to the main bridge where everyone wants a photo. All right, so traffic here is one fifth of what it normally is in high season. And on the weekend, you could barely cross the bridge. It was that busy. I would say it's still busy but I can't imagine being here in the high season so another reason that you might want to come here when it's warm out. Where we're staying it's only nine minutes away and on the way there's an alley that has some food. It has cow lao there it was the first thing I ate when I got here and it's the last thing I want to eat before I leave. It's so so good. So we're gonna head there now. My last meal at Quan An 625, the people here are so amazing and I will really miss eating Khao Lao here. I think it's one of the best in the city. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.